there's now a uh, rising tension across the Middle East. Uh, there are protests going on as we speak outside the American embassy in Cairo. Uh, there seems to be more security today. The overnight they were beating back the protesters with uh, tear gas. So there's been no repetition of the incidents on Tuesday when they actually managed to climb into the embassy and take down the American flag. Uh, there have also been protests in uh, Yemen today. Uh, the American embassy there has been stormed in uh, the capital Sana'a. There's a tense situation there. Uh, there have been uh, calls to action and to protest in, in other countries as well. What can the U.S. do? Uh, obviously, I think the first thing they'll be thinking of is uh, increasing security of their embassies. Uh, the, uh, what happened in Benghazi was very extraordinary in many ways uh, because they seem to have uh, underplayed the need for security in Benghazi. It wasn't a reinforced embassy building, uh, even though it was identified as the consulate. It was an interim building that had been used during the uprising. And despite uh, previous attacks on uh, diplomatic uh, missions, including this one in, in um, Benghazi, there was not a strong uh, presence of the Marines, say, who uh, defend embassies in uh, uh, in Tripoli and, uh, and other capitals. Uh, there was a local security presence. Uh, there, was, there was some uh, State Department security, and then they relied on a local militia to defend the uh, consulate, but that seems to have uh, not been very effective. So I think that's very much the first thing on the State Department's list. Whether there will be a wider palliation or uh, you know, attempt to assert American authority, that's a very difficult matter. Who can they, who can they target? That's the big question.